Hey, how's it going, New Life family? Thank you so much for tuning into this track reading video. And as always, I'm stoked to be getting into God's word with you guys as we continue through the book of Ezekiel. And honestly, what better way to get ready for the Christmas season than reading through the book of Ezekiel? I know it sounds kind of strange, but I'm reminded of the promise at the beginning of the book. Well, God hands Ezekiel the scroll in Ezekiel chapter 2, and he says, read this scroll and eat it. And uh, Ezekiel reads it, and he, he's like, man, this is full of lamentations and woe and mourning, and it's a very heavy book. But he said, when I actually ate it, it was sweet to me. It was sweet as honey. And that's the promise that we have as we continue reading through the book. I'm sure a lot of you have been reading through it, and, and we're all kind of feeling the heaviness of God's judgment on Israel, on Israel's people. And even during this past week, we read about God's judgment on other nations around Israel, and it's a very heavy Thing. But if we choose, if we intentionally take up the challenge to not just read this and say, wow, that's heavy and, and put it on the shelf, but we decide, no, I'm going to actually commit this to my heart. The more you think about it, the more you read it, the sweeter it gets. And I found one of the sweet moments uh, earlier in this week's track reading in Ezekiel chapter 21. Now, this is the prophecy where God tells Ezekiel, hey, I'm drawing my sword. I'm getting ready to judge Israel. And again, it's a very heavy chapter. We read where he tells Ezekiel, mourn and weep so that people look at you and ask, why are you weeping? And tell them, hey, this is going to be a very heavy judgment. It says, uh, all hands will become feeble, all knees will melt, every spirit will become faint. It's a very heavy judgment. But this is an appropriate response to God's judgment. We read in, in chapter 12, God says, cry out and wail, son of man, for it is against my people it is against all the officials of Israel, and they are delivered over to the sword with my people. God is not delight in the judgment that he's about to deliver, but it is a necessary judgment because evil deserves God's judgment. And that's the theme that we've already been reading through Ezekiel. But I think what's so important is to see this command to mourn and to weep. I think those of us who have been following Jesus for a while are used to the story of my sin separated me from God, but Jesus made a way for me to be forgiven. And while that is so true, I think sometimes we become so used to the idea of forgiveness that we forget how much we actually need it. God says, mourn and weep because of the sin. When we think about our own sin, do we mourn and weep over it? Though we might have been forgiven of the eternal consequences of our sin, there's still consequences for sin in this life. Sin is is ugly. Sin is dangerous. Sin, sin has destructive, deadly consequences. When we lie, that breaks trust that we have to rebuild. When we gossip, that severs relationships that might not ever be the same. And when we do these sins that we think maybe nobody knows or that are just little sins, we don't realize these sins we ought to mourn for. When we think about those who are outside of Christ, and God's judgment rightly falls on them. Do we mourn for them? Do we weep for them? And God tells Ezekiel, mourn and weep for my people because they are under sin. And the, the, the command is to especially mourn because God is saying that Zedekiah, the king of Israel right now, he's about to come under God's judgment. And actually, the, the judgment is so severe, he's about to be stripped of his crown, that there's this question left hanging in verse 13. Literally, the question is, what if even the scepter which despises will be no more? What if the scepter that despises will be no more? We're told in chapter 19 that Zedekiah, the scepter, the king of Israel, despised God. He didn't trust in God's strength, but instead he made an alliance with Babylon because Babylon had a great army. Their king Nebuchadnezzar is called the king of kings in, in later chapters. He is like the, the top of the line right now in the, in the world right now. And instead of trusting in God, Zedekiah allies with him. And he isn't even content with that because we also read in chapter 19 that he breaks trust with Nebuchadnezzar, and he goes and also allies with Egypt. And so he's, he's trusting in all these kings instead of trusting in God. And God says, Zedekiah's sin is so wicked. The, 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 the sin of all other leaders in Israel is so wicked that they actually could be jeopardizing God's promise of bringing a king, bringing a scepter 
that will rule Israel forever. This is a real reality that sin has real consequences. We ought to mourn for it. What if our sin costs too much? But thankfully, the question is not left hanging too long. We read in verse 27, uh, God prophesies through Ezekiel, and he's talking about Jerusalem, and he says, A ruin, a ruin, a ruin, I will make it. This also will be no more until he comes whose right it is, and I will give it to him. God says, I'm going to use Babylon to bring Jerusalem to a ruin, and it will not be the same until the right king comes. The rightful heir to the throne shows up, and then when only the king who is worthy comes, I will give him the throne of Jerusalem. And we're told that this is kind of the, the promise that's left hanging through Ezekiel, that God is going to bring judgment on the kings of Israel, but there's this promise that a rightful king will come through. And I'm reminded of the promise that we hear as, as Jacob prophesies over his son Judah in Genesis 49. In Genesis 49 verse 10, this is what Jacob prophesies. He says, the scepter will not leave Judah. The scepter will not go from between his legs, I think it says, until the one who comes who it belongs, and all the peoples will obey him. This is a promise made all the way in Genesis that God is going to raise up a king through Judah, and all the peoples will obey him. And now God is saying, I have not forgotten that promise. Though you have forgotten me, though you have despised me, I'm faithful. I will keep this king. And now we're getting ready to celebrate the moment in history when this promise was fulfilled. The first verse of the Gospel of Matthew says, this is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David. He is the rightful heir to the throne. He is the one from the line of David that was prophesied. And the angel even tells Joseph, you're gonna name him Jesus because he's gonna save Israel from their greatest problem. Not Babylon, not their kings, their sin. And that's what we have to hope for. Though we may mourn for the sin that we produce, God has brought a solution. And I hope that we keep this in focus as we continue reading through Ezekiel. I thank you guys so much for tuning into this track reading video. Continue reading, and I can't wait to see you guys next time.